we've benchmarked this header and uh, forager against uh, other brands and we put it all over Weybridge and max we can get over 920 with the new header on is 500 ton an hour. 500 ton an hour? Gentlemen, hello and welcome along to another first impression piece from us. This time we are checking out the latest developments to New Holland's FR Forager range. Not least, it has a brand new pickup and it's got a new cab control layout. So, to talk us through the updates, we have uh, Mr. Stephen Lucknan here, who is going to, uh, like I say, talk us around all the updates. So, the plan today is. First of all, we're going to get a walk around outside the machine, particularly have a good look at this uh, new grass pickup, and then hopefully, fingers crossed, if the weather holds, we'll jump in the cab, we'll have a look at all the new updates, and we'll have a bash on the forager as well and see what this new pickup yeah. is capable of. Uh, expecting good things, I Stephen. Th I think you will be surprised. Good stuff. Right. So, without further ado then, Stephen, we'll get stuck in, but uh, yeah, just kick us off first of all. Just uh, talk us through what's in the FR family. We have an FR7, well, FR480, 550, 650, 780 and 920. So, 920 is our biggest one, uh, 911 horsepower. Cursor 13 is in your 480 and your 550. Cursor 16 in your 650 and your 780. And then your Vector 20 in your 920, which is... V8, yeah. uh, 20 litre V8. Realistically, the header is probably the biggest thing about, before our 780s and 920s were limited capacity by our header, and yeah. now the new header has transformed that. So, so basically, the, the foragers grew up, and so it ha outgrew the header, the header yeah. basically. It's particularly yeah. the top two models. Yeah, but a lot of people would say that the, a header is a header, but it's not, I, it makes all no, the difference. It makes a it's lot the of bit, difference. Uh, well, it's the bit that gets the crop flow going, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's key to the crop flow. And there's a, not a lot of stuff, there's barely anything really the same on this header compared to the old header. As you this can... is a brand new pickup. This isn't just an updated no, pickup or anything no, like that. This no. is brand spanking. Yeah, right. brand spanking. So, especially on the forager as well, you'll see a bit new styling. We also have a few new bits as well, which we'll probably go through after. Yeah. Um, we have uh, an FR780 going here in the background as well. I was going to say, um, we are on the coast of Cumbria today, so if you hear a bit of wind noise, don't worry about it, it's just a bit breezy today, but yeah, um, this is the FR780 just coming up It's there. an FR780 with the old grass pickup. Right. So when we get going in a little bit, you'll probably, you'll see a massive difference in performance of the machine compared to the 780 with the older grass header on it. Yeah. Our limiting factor at the minute is probably horsepower. Right. Yeah, we're just not else limiting us other than horsepower. So we'll probably we'll just have a bit of a walk around the header. There's a few little different spec options that you can get on the header, but you can spec bigger wheels on the front. You can spec hydraulic adjustable um, height. We don't really need hydraulic adjustable height. Because when you when you set your tines, they're set. Um, the crop roller is probably, as you can see, it's a lot bigger. That is a big crop roller. Yeah, it, it is very big. So we've gone from our double roller to a bit one big roller, and then we have a spring compression. So that's just keeping the crop keeping in the, check, yeah. keeping it down, keeping it compressed. Yeah. Before so, it even gets to the pickup reel, and that sort of paddle behind it, this bit here. That's just keeping it pressed on the pickup, yeah, is it? Yeah. Um, five cam steered or cam track um, pickup bars, um, six mil tines. The tines are the same as the previous header. The auger flighting is very aggressive, very aggressive compared to before, and it's double flighted, so it's stronger. Right, so this is like I suppose you could say a steeper sort of angle, is it? On yeah, the, on the yeah. There. Pull the lumps apart, um, 
it's a suspended auger as well, so um, it'll move up and down when there's crop going through it. Yeah, and that'll yeah. be independent of of the uh, yeah, so the roller at the front. So as the auger moves, that's not going to affect this. No, is it? No. no. So the crop roller is adjustable in 10 centimeter. Uh, adjustment so you can let it up in 10 centimeter adjustments uh, depending if you're in like really dry crops sometimes it'll bulldoze a little bit you just let it up 10 or 20 centimeters and yeah. then it'll compress it again uh, but I usually run it in zero the whole time just to just get on the deck just pack it yeah right yeah there you go and just going back to the pickup again you say it's uh, you you guys still use a cam track yeah obviously there's a cam track in this end is the one in the far side as well yes yes um, so the pickup tines are now hydraulically, well they're always hydraulically driven, but they're driven from the centre. So you'll see, if you look in underneath, see the way they're stepped now? That's where it, before yeah. they would have... Sort of look down there, yeah, you see the step, yeah. Yeah, they would have been all in a line. We can get a lot more flow, and we can get a lot more um, RPM out of the, in the new pickup, because before, I think it was 140 something RPM, and now we're up to like 176 or 180 RPM on, right. the, on the pickup tines. So in terms of this pickup drive, I mean, it looks it looks very different in here. It you is. Know, there's no change or anything. What's going on? No, all belt driven. And probably one of the coolest thing about this is how you know the tension is you have to use your phone. Yeah. So we have an app now that you go onto and you get a 13 spanner and you bang the belt and then it gives off a, a hertz. Right. And then that's how you can tell how... You're joking. No. Really? No. That's how you tell the belt tension now. But I haven't been in... Like, I've been... Had this panel off a few times this year, just showing people the belt drive, but I haven't had to adjust it all season. So no. Far. And I have 100 chopping hours done so far on the machine. Yeah. So, so 100 hours done so far, you've not even touched the tension on no, this. No. Right. No. And what's the reason for going belt drive over... You can run it faster. Run, run faster. Run it faster, yeah. Right. Yeah and less maintenance. Maintenance is such a big thing. Like everyone just wants to get in and go yeah. and just get on with the That's day. That's it. Uh, header is all auto greased as well. You have a few manual grease nipples so on your adjusters and on your crop roller, but everything else is auto greaser. There's a, an auto grease port built into the quick coupler. Right. So it just all connects up and then... So you just plumb in the header as you normally would. Yeah. And it's, uh, it looks after itself. Yeah. Right. It's very handy to be honest. Yeah. Well, like you say, with this belt drive, I mean, if you had a chain on here, I mean, it has to be a massive chain to handle the power now. Yeah. I assume this can handle more power than you could put through chains, could you, as well? Yeah. 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 And you, you don't have as much wear. Like, a, a, a belt is really a lot cheaper in the long run than yeah. a chain, because it would be taking a half link out or taking a link out and adjusting it and checking it every day. But with the belt, I've never had any trouble with it. It never had it slip. When when I heard at first that it was belt drive, I was a little bit skeptical, yeah. but now that I've used it. Yeah. I lo what I, are these engineers coming yeah, up with yeah. this time? Yeah, but yeah. I, I do love it, to be honest. It's, but you do see, you know, on bigger machines now, no matter what it is, whether it's a forager, a combine, or even like a, a forage wagon, there's a lot more belt drive now, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, yeah. it seems to be the drive. way everyone's going. There's also another little feature on the header is we have a safety button. So say if you get a metal detection yeah. and I go to reverse the header, yeah. I reverse the header, the trailer driver gets out, bangs that, and then I can't do anything from the cab. Right. So it's safe. It's, I, I think it's good because when I was a trailer driver before, yeah. when you go in there, that man in the sea... You're this, relying on that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that just kills everything then. It's very handy. Um, and once you've, once you've killed it, and you get back up and running again, what does the chopper driver then have to do? Can they just sort of reset it again? So when, when you knock that in, you just press the middle button, pull it out, and then the chopper driver takes back over full control. All ah, right, so you cancel it from here. Yeah. Right, yeah. got you. Um, the, with the suspended auger as well, for a metal detection or something like that, it does like a two-stage reverse cycle. Yeah. So it lifts the auger up, reverses, it reverses very fast, then it drops the auger down and reverses again and clears the floor. Right. So what I tend to do when I'm driving it is get a metal detection, it automatically lifts the header now, which it didn't before. Um, so as soon as you get a metal detection now, the header will come up? Header lifts, yeah, right. because before it used to bulldoze the grass. That's right, yep. But yeah, yeah. that doesn't happen now anymore. But with the two-stage reversing, if you keep reversing the actual forager itself, when it does the second 
clearing of the floor. The metal is in the in the last little bit. Yeah. So you can just drive over it and then let a trailer driver sort it out. <laughs> That's what they're there for, <laughs> yeah. Hey? Um, but yeah, it's very handy because instead of it throwing out one big massive lump and then you're looking through it for the piece of metal, yeah. it's in a small little bit of grass that's, that's thrown out. You're looking it. through one big lump and then when you come to pick up that lump again, you've got a big lump to sort of nibble your way at yeah. and then try and pick that lump up. Yeah. When we get it working in a little bit, you'll really see how much that crop roller actually does. Yeah. Like it, I know it's a, it, everyone is like, it's a crop roller, but it does a lot of work. Yeah. It does a lot of work. Like it says, it all starts with the pickup, doesn't well, it? Well, as you can see now, there's no real floor in the header anymore. So it's just literally straight off the deck and up into the forager. That's it. And that auger is really close at the moment, isn't it? It is. Obviously, until you get some grass through it. And I see it's open. Yeah. It's open at the side here as well. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if you've got crop. Out you know, the side. you're doing those awkward corners. And you've got crop round here. It'll pull it in. Yeah. Um, also, with the tine bands now, we have changed tine bands, so they're polymer plastic. Uh, you can take what, that 113 off and then you can bend the tine band fully back. Right, so you don't have to go rooting underneath. Yeah, no rooting underneath anymore. 113 and then you're in at the tines. That's it's it. Very yeah. handy. Very and you, you can pull that tine band back and change the tine just, yeah. just nice and easy like that. Yeah, two minutes, three minutes. Right. Depends how quick you are. But, um, <laughs> Two work lights inside in the header as well. So you have a work light there and a work light at the back. Right. We've changed the mesh as well inside on the actual um, header itself just to yeah. keep the front of the machine very clean. Like, the machine is very clean at the minute and I haven't blown it down in, I'd say, four or five days. Right. And it's surprising how clean it keeps itself. That's it, yeah. But you'll really see how beefy the front of it is. Like There's these, some, uh, some metal in this, there isn't there? There is it? some metal. We've side skid plates for fall on the ground when you get into dry or wet conditions. So that if your wheels do sink, it'll just slide in the skid plates. Yeah. And then we have two wheels at the back on, on either side. Right. Um, to follow the ground as well. So you've pretty much got four wheels following the ground. Yeah, more or less. Right. You don't have a centre wheel, it's just the... No, centre wheel is gone. Yeah. In terms of following the ground, is there much sort of... Does so, it move sideways, you know, rock Yeah, it sideways, does yeah. move sideways. This is um, lateral flotation on it because it's spec for maize as well. So it's kind of the ram floats yeah. and lets it float itself. Right. And if I had a, an older FR forager, could this, I had this new pickup fit straight on? Fit straight on, straight yeah. on yeah. Because right. at the start of the season, we brought the header around to some current New Holland customers with like 550s and 650s and they tried them out. And I'd seen a comment on Facebook the other day that one customer said it's like he added 100 horsepower to his forager by <laughs> just having this header. Just changing headers. Yeah. But the, the forager itself has a lot of new features as well. So right. the, some Talk us through it. The buttons have changed here. So now we can cycle our header drive gearbox from here. So if you're putting on the shaft, you can move the gearbox a little bit to line up your Yeah, just shaft. nudge it around a bit. Yeah. Um, what else has changed? We've changed the cab, the chin piece on the cab. It's gone to fully black now. It was yellow and black. Oh, this little piece here? Uh, yeah, just on the front. Yeah, yeah just on it's there. It's all black now. So that's all black now. Yeah. Um, but it's just a bit more aggressive. Yeah, a bit more yeah. aggressive, yeah. Yeah. We have a crop stop sensor now, which is, uh, it's like a flow, a flow speed sensor. So that reads the speed of the crop coming out of end of the shoot right and when that senses that the speed goes below a certain speed yeah it'll stop the feed rollers right yeah so it's like a, an anti-choke yeah um feature which is very handy so you can push the forager to its maximum capacity the whole time and not have to worry about getting in them unblocking it right it'll hopefully warn you before you have to yeah yeah. Before you're bunging it up and yeah. Yeah. And it, even if you do get to a stage where you do push it too hard, realistically it'll probably just block the end of the spout. It'll be what, two, three minutes to unblock the end of the spout. Yeah. It's not the end of the end of the world. Yeah. We've also put some indicators, and I'm going back to the header again, but we've put some indicators now so we actually know what the adjustment is on the wheels. Right. Where before we didn't have anything like that. The lights are all uh individually controlled now, so you can dim all them LED work lights from zero to 100%. So if you have a light shining in the back window of the trailer, of the trailer tractor, yeah. you can turn off that light completely. 
Right. So you're not blinding the driver the whole time. Ah, right. But yeah. you can have every other light still on at 100%. Yeah. It's, I, uh, it's a nice feature. Right, good stuff, Stephen. That is the outside of the forage yeah. you've done, especially that pickup. Yeah. Uh, I think it's now time we dive in. We see what this pickup is actually like, and we see what this uh, new cab interior is like as yeah. well. Yeah. Spot on. Get a bit of grass through it. We'll crack on with that then. <laughs>